So shout outs to Eric, um, a guy on the Jeep forum. He's the one who made this major discovery. I, I take no credit for this. I just read the form and I'm just presenting you the job that I'm going to, you know, that they did just in video form. Shout out to them. He, Eric, uh, found out and diagnosed this issue that he was having with his YJ. He opened up his master clutch cylinder on the stock one. And well, even on the new one, he discovered that the new master clutch cylinder that he had bought sp specifically for the YJ has a two cup sealing mechanism. And what's happening, instead of using the O-ring, it's allowing air to enter. And well, it, you know, air is being introduced into the system through that master clutch cylinder. And so that's why he discovered that this was a perfect candidate because it bolts right up. Um, the exception being this and then the, the size there. But that's the reason why we're doing it. And I've experienced the symptoms too. After 30 minutes to 40 minutes of driving, trying to put this in first gear, it would grind. And I've noticed and I've done funny tests where I would put my foot on the clutch and then I would slowly try to engage it into first gear. And I would notice that if I were to wait at least two to three seconds depressing this thing, it would give it enough time for the master clutch cylinder to disengage or the slave cylinder to disengage the clutch and then I'm able to put it into first gear. I was planning to change this anyway because my thing is leaking on the bottom and so that's the only reason I'm doing this job. And I found that upgrade, so why not? Now for this mod, if you wanna stay as stock as possible, and you just want to upgrade the master clutch cylinder, then all you will need is this Willwood master clutch cylinder, which I've already provided the part number. Here's the number again. You will also need an adapter piece because this is a 3 8 to 24th. And on the receiving end of this factory line is a 7 16. So you are going to need an adapter, a three ends adapter to 7 16 in order for this to work because it won't bolt up to it. It, it won't just mount up no problem. You, you're going to need an adapter piece, which they sell. I haven't seen it at AutoZone. I wasn't really looking for it, but I've on the forum, someone said that they found it at AutoZone. And well, you might as well get a copper washer. I'm going to be using a copper washer in here just to have a better seal. So not only will you just need this, you're also going to need this Heim or Hem joint, which again, I'll provide the part number if this works. Somebody on the forum said this specific one fit perfectly without having to mod anything. What I mean by that is that this little ball joint here, you're going to have to pop out. We're going to pop this out and we're just going to use the outer part or I don't know how you would call it for this to fit onto your clutch master or for your clutch pedal. So this is going to be needed for the clutch pedal as you press the clutch. This is going to push this rod end and that's how you're going to be able to use your clutch. So if you want to stay as stock as possible, all you will need is this, the Heim joint and the adapter piece. That's all. But in my case, I'm not only just going to be using this, I'm also going to be using a speed bleed, which here's the part number. Here's the size for that speed bleed, which in my case, and I've heard that these Jeeps and especially people on the forums have said that these Jeeps are hard to bleed out anyway. So, and I'm going to be doing this as a one man job. I bought this speed bleed because it'll make a job. It'll make the job a lot easier. It has a little valve inside where it'll allow the liquid and air to escape, but no air to come back in, which is sounds like heaven uh, somebody in the forum swears by this and says that these are highly recommended again here is the part is a russell part i'm gonna link and post pictures of everything that i buy here so here's the size and it is here's the original one here's the original bleed um they, they don't have this at the parts stores they don't even bother going i already went i went to napa went to autozone they do not have it so you're gonna need to source this online i'm also going to be replacing the factory line because I don't know how long this will last. There's nothing wrong with this. Nothing was leaking. But, you know, as now that I'm in there type of thing, I, I'm going to replace it. So I bought a braided line. Here is the braided line that I found. Somebody on the forum recommended this. I found this on Amazon. Here's the size and all that. Now, because I'm going with this, I do not need an adapter piece because this will bolt up perfectly to my new braided line. But I am going to need an adapter piece because this is a 3 8 line or threaded size. And this is all 7 16 So for the other end where the slave is going to connect, this is a 7 16 So I needed an adapter. So this 3 8 size is going to be fed into here. And then my 7 16 side is going to be feeding into this part. That's how I'm going to bolt all of this up. So I'm going to be linking all the parts and things here that I'm going to be using. And we'll show you 
and we'll be seeing this together how well this is going to work i don't i haven't seen anybody document this type of job no one has done this i've just read this on forum it's recently new fairly new so i'm making this video to test it out as you can see i already have it all bled out there's nothing in there um, i already loosened up the bolts here it's ready to go uh i've been slowly working on this thing just to be able to document everything uh i have a zip tie a1 zip tie for my pedal but yeah see look there's nothing down there it's all ready to go and let's go look underneath here i already have it all bled out and everything it's all nice and ready yep look here's there's nothing there connected so we'll see how it works like i said i wanted to document this oh and see here's here's that piece where my my new line's going to come in that's why i bought that adapter piece because that adapter piece is going to come off of the new braided line adapter piece and then it's going to connect to that right there for my slave this isn't leaking which is good that's just oil you know these things if it's not leaking oil you don't have oil um and here's that you could possibly remove that and replace it but i didn't want to do that i just wanted a little fitting There we go. It's loose. We should be able to just pop this thing out. If you're wondering, it's a 13. Ew, look at that. Oh my gosh. It was a Wagner part two, and look at that. Ooh, yeah, I definitely needed a new one. Now I needed to take the old one out so that way I can measure the hem joint. Um, I'm also gonna take out the, the thing. I'm gonna try to do that now. But yes, I have them here side by side, have them as close as possible, and then we're gonna measure it the distance so that way we can have this as close as possible to this OEM one. So what actually worked was I just grabbed the socket. This was a 17 millimeter socket. All I did was just place it here with the heim joint, with the ball just sticking up like this. Just turn it, cause you can rotate it. Just began hammering it like this. You're gonna have to rotate it, play with it, and eventually it'll just pop out. We'll try it on to see if, if the circle diameter is the same, which looks to be the case. So we're gonna go measure it up and see how well it's gonna bolt up to that thing. There's no room in here, but yeah, you can see here's the little joint. So we're gonna put this sucker up in there, see if it'll fit. Yep, it'll fit, perfect, perfect fit. Hey, look at that, perfect. But now that I confirmed that it fits, I'm gonna clean up this area before we install it because that is disgusting and um, yeah, we'll be on our way to installing this thing. So it's going to be off by a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna shave it down. I don't feel like messing with that anyway. Maybe I could, maybe I could cut off a little bit, but it won't line up perfectly of inches off, centimeters really. We line this up perfectly. The pedal is gonna be a little bit more upward which could be too weird for your liking so what you could do is shave off the thread which i don't know i may do that it may not or you can leave it as is the guy eric who did this said he left it like that he didn't even um shave it off or anything i know another guy on there that also did this mod uh he shaved it off a little bit i i guess i could do that i'm gonna try to do that So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use two washers to space it out a little bit, and that way I'll be close to proximity to this thing. I think that's what I'm gonna do.
Perfect. Look at that. Fits in there just perfectly. There we go. See, and then I have the two, two washers. Uh, again, I don't know if that'll make a big difference or not in the distance, but uh, I'm gonna be doing that. That's what I'm gonna be doing. And then I added my washers just to make sure I have a, a good seal there. Now, as we can see from the bottom of the Jeep here, there's the line that comes from over there. I'm gonna have to route this up here somehow. Oh, that's perfect right there. That's perfect, yeah. So that's how we're gonna route it, I think. Threading in. There we go. See, threading it in there. So I got it all mounted up now. I tightened that bolt down. I put back the old bracket right in here. As you can see, because there's a bracket that holds that line there, the rubber line. And so I put it back on there too, because it's going to help it 10 times better. Um, now I'm going to put the speed bleed on there. And then after I put the speed bleed on, I'm going to put, I'm going to tighten down the line that goes to the master clutch cylinder. And then from there we'll start bleeding. So everything's installed, everything's tightened down. Um, we're gonna add some liquid in here. This is tightened down. I routed it this way. Um, I wanted to, I was, there's many ways I wanted to route it, but I think this is the best way. I'm gonna have to put something here to, so that way it's not rubbing terribly. Um, I couldn't run it, I wanted to run it across there, but it wouldn't work. I wanted to run it from underneath here, but that wouldn't work because I would just put too much stress on that line. Uh, as you can see, there's a new line there. It snakes all the way down there. So it comes above from the master slave cylinder, hooks its way down there, and it just gently just snakes all the way down there where it belongs. Um, normally that's how the, the, the factory master line or the clutch line goes. Mine was zip tied to that little bolt hole right there. Uh, but you know, again, this is pretty much all custom now. So we're gonna start bleeding it. On the bottom, like I said, this is a speed bleed. This is the first time I've used this. First time I'm gonna bleed the clutch. So this is how I have it. I already have that nut loose. I have that container there just to catch any of it. And uh, yeah, we're gonna be on our way. Okay, I think I bled this thing enough. Um, I kept pumping the pedal until it got harder and harder, and it did. At first it was squishy, but now it's very firm. Um, at first I was scared because when I installed this thing first, I guess the hole was a little bit too big for the quarter inch, um, for the bleeder hose or the outlet, because as I started pumping, like the second pump, I saw a whole bunch of brake fluid just dripping down here. And I was afraid maybe one of my my fittings wasn't going to work or whatever. I thought it was leaking from there. But it's not. Those things are not leaking. It turns out that the hole diameter was just too big. That it was just, it, it just had no pressure. So luckily I found this old line that fits perfectly right on top of the bleeder. And so it's, I bled it well enough to the point that I think we're good to go to, to test it. Now, before I get too excited and start driving this thing, I wanted to show you the bottom part of this thing. Um, it fits, I gotta, I'm gonna put a better cotter pin in there. I have new ones. I just reused the old one, uh, but I have new ones I'm gonna try to put in there. You'll need a good size washer to make it sit there snugly. The old washer that came with this thing was pretty thick. And well, I didn't use that because it's, um, it's just too thick. It wouldn't allow me to fit it in there with the other one. So that's not that hard, that's not too difficult. But yeah, look, it's all snugged in there and it's not that hard. I I don't know, just find which way is easier for you. I had tightened down the master clutch cylinder to the firewall and I didn't realize I didn't have that put in, but I mean, it, it's a tight fit, you're just gonna have to move the pedal. And look, the pedal is 
super hard now, which is A1. That's what we're looking for. So let's go for a drive. Clutch definitely feels nice and firm, which is a good thing. Uh -huh. I took off the thing acting like I'm really am going to be able to go for a drive, but let's, let's see. Mm, no grinding. Pressing the clutch all the way down. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. So clutch all the way down. No grinding. Okay. That's a good sign. Ooh. Start taking it off slowly. Hmm, okay, I think it's gonna work. Rookie mistake, I had the, the brake, e-brake on. Okay, let's try it again. This time the e-brake is fully disengaged. Thank goodness I realized it. I've always had sec issues with second gear. That was easier. Oh yeah, this feels a lot better. So I couldn't double clutch before into this Jeep. Um, double clutching was a very hard thing for me to do in this thing. And I could never get it right, no matter how many times I tried. I know it's clutch, neutral, clutch, second gear, but I couldn't get it right. And I think that was because of my master clutch sooner, because now I can do it perfectly. Before, I used to just shift near the 1000 RPM, because that's when I would notice that it would actually allow me to shift into second gear without grinding. Mind you, this is the BA10 transmission. cambio that was second gear third gear no grinding and that was double clutching it i could never get it right because the old one was leaking and allowing more air to come in anyway but either way this was the best mod Double clutching in second gear, no grind. That's beautiful. I'm enjoying this. All right, so I'm back home. We're neutral. Clutch first. Oh, I'm a fraud. Clutch first, second, third, fourth, fifth, reverse. No problem. First. Letting go of the clutch. That's when it starts moving. Letting go. And I stalled. But um, you get the point. This has been a very good mod. Um, the total that I spent for this whole mod. So over overall, the total for the master clutch cylinder was 80. Uh, that little Heim joint was 764 the speed bleed was eighteen dollars it comes with a pack of two it's expensive um the amazon brake line that i installed 37.61 and well you can see the rest well the total including with brake fluid say if i didn't have any it would have it costed me a hundred and sixty two dollars and five cents but that's doing all of this that was all the master clutch the heim joint the speed bleed uh, those were the that was a brake line and that was the the inverted little thing you know the little adapter that i needed for my brake line so all in all that's how much it came out costing now if you don't buy everything else and you just buy the master clutch cylinder buy the heim joint and you buy the adapter the adapter would cost you about the same price so i just calculated seven and say you have brake fluid, it would cost you $95.19 to do this job. 
Um, again, this is if you use all the stock lines, you just get the master clutch cylinder, the little adapter piece, and that's it. That's how much it's going to cost you. If you do it all, like how I showed you in the video, it's going to cost you roughly like that. It may be that it might come out cheaper depending how much you find the parts for. But in my situation, that's how much it came out to be. Before I completely end the video, I do want to make a disclaimer. That day that I drove it, it was a warm day. So the transmission was already warm. To my discovery, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, but I didn't is that if you have the BA-10 transmission in these Jeeps, when the transmission is warm or hot, you can shift into second gear, no problem. In my case, second gear grinds every time. When the transmission is warm enough, I can double clutch into second without grinding. But when the transmission is cold, it doesn't matter if I try to double clutch it, it just won't shift. So I just want to let you know, I thought this completely fixed my problems until I drove it that night again in the, like in the evening when it was not cooler and it will grind in second gear trying to go, trying to double clutch it in. So I was like, okay, what the heck is going on? And then I, I did some research on the forums and it turns out other people had the same symptoms in their BA-10 transmission. So for my solution... When the transmission is cold like how it is today today is like a cool day but because you know right now it's like cold metal stuff when i start driving it i just have to rev it high from first gear and just go into third gear and skip second completely until it warms up then i'll be able to double clutch it into second i thought this completely fixed my problem no it's just that my transmission is crappy and it, it's no good it's no good. So I just want to make that disclaimer because I know I had said that this fixed my second gear problem, uh, which it did. But my transmission being that it's old and crappy, it it grinds when it's cold. So before I couldn't even double clutch when it was warm. Like before, I couldn't even double clutch it at all. So just want to let you know, if you have the BA-10 transmission that... When it's warm, you can double clutch no problem. But when it's cold, you're going to have to skip second gear completely, go from first to third gear, let this thing warm up, and then it'll warm up enough. Hopefully, your drive is long enough that, you know, you'll be able to double clutch in the second. I promise you, in my case, <clears throat> in my situation, as long as the transmission was warm enough, I could double clutch no problem into second gear. It was beautiful. And before, I couldn't even do that with my old setup. Like, I couldn't do that with my old thing. So, <clears throat> I just want to give you a heads up. Because I know I had said it fixed it, but it really didn't. Um, it's just my transmission is terrible. So, I hope that, I hope this video and guide helps you. And like I said, as always, I hope, uh, you know, next thing that we got to do is definitely the brakes. Uh, the brakes are definitely wonky. Um, I'm not driving this thing anymore until I fix the brakes. I mean, I could drive it around the block, but I don't feel safe and comfortable anymore. It, it'll leak a lot will leak from here um luckily my brake line seemed to be okay it's just this is bad now i'm also questioning the fact how how do those lines feel too because they're crusty maybe i could clean them and i it, it just just you're crusty because of the liquid all, all this brake fluid has been leaking here for a while and the previous ownership and that's just you know just maintenance stuff so there's a lot of things I got to clean up in here. But overall, this truck is, is nice. Uh, the Jeep is, is awesome. So I hope you stick around for the Jeep uh, restoration and build. I don't know what I'm going to do. For the meantime, I think I'm going to keep it in stock height and stock wheels just because I have that crappy B10 transmission. I'm going to save up to buy the AX15. But for the meantime, we're going to keep it with that tranny until I get money and have all the components to do a swap. Uh, but yeah, for the meantime, that transmission's been okay. I haven't had any grinding issues. Occasionally, I've noticed that in first gear, it would grind still. But I just have to hold my foot just for a little bit second, more for like a little bit longer than just a second. And I'll be able to shift no problem. But I mean, that's just the, the transmission in general just being crappy. But yeah, overall, I'm happy. I mean, the, the, the mod helped a lot. And whatever transmission I put in here next, the AX15, this will still work with it. It's not an issue. So I'm not worried about that. Um, here's the engine for all you new guys. If you just happen to check out the channel and just happen to watch the video, this is my 1988 Jeep YJ Wrangler. 
Uh, picked this up for $2,000. Uh, it just needs some cleaning. I have some LED lights. Um, we have an LED lights that we that we put in there. Uh, these are for an F-150 or F-250 square body. They fit perfectly fine. I think it's like a, a five by six. No, bigger than that. It's, it's something like five by seven. I put a new cover on it. As you can tell, the old one was definitely in need of switching out. It was definitely old, but yeah, it looks a lot nicer, 10 times better. I bought this at on eBay for $180. It came with all of it. It came with obviously the door window cover and the whole other schlaz. Um, I still have to fix that issue. That, that thing is like on its last leg. The mechanism is broken. That's just literally a piece of plastic that's holding um, my top. And then I got to figure out on this side too, because I have nothing sustaining that plastic bar. The only thing holding that rear bar back is literally that little piece of metal there. So I have to fix that. Um, but yeah, overall, this is my Jeep Wrangler. The next big job that I got to do is the brakes because I don't feel comfortable in these things anymore. And then I'm going to have to paint and uh, fix that and buy new bolts because my retainer bolts no longer hold. Was it worth it? thinking that it was going to fix my problem no it won't fix your problem completely with having uh the ba10 and still grinding that it's still going to happen because the transmission is dumb but as far as any more problems in the future with any transmissions i don't think i'll have any more issues with that uh so this is just a short guide or a big guide or whatever i hope this helped you if you plan on installing this will wood i'll keep you guys updated as i go along but so far it's holding up 100 percent great i've been driving and dogging this thing and it's been awesome very awesome so i hope you enjoyed today's videos and as always i look forward to seeing you next video